Hey, you guys, what's going on? I think it's time we talk about reversals now, okay? So yesterday I went live on YouTube and here on TradingView where I talked about how to make price action trading easier. And if you missed that live, just go to my streams on YouTube or here on the TradingView platform and you guys can watch it. Then I got a question on there about reversals. How do you spot reversals or how do you identify reversals? Let's go ahead and let's talk about it. Now, first thing first is reversals are not something that you can just force and just create out of thin air. Um, I know a lot of times when people are trading, uh, once again, it's about when they're trading like structure or whatever the case may be. One of the things that I noticed that people like to do is say, well, if price breaks supporter resistance or my zone or my trend line, or whatever the case may be, price has to be reversing. But that is not always the case. And what we really want to focus on and pay attention to is how is price reversing? Why do we think the, the, the reversal is here? And where can price go to next? So what I like to teach you, just like how I teach my clients, is mindset change and like, like a roadmap strategy. So let's talk about it. Let's look at Swiss yen, okay? So this is a currency pair that has been in an uptrend for quite some time, all right? Um, I'm going to show you guys what i mean here okay so she has been going up like if you look at her fluctuations at prices going down and then up and then down and then up and then down and then up it's like scaling to the upside right and so this is one where we can say that price is in an uptrend okay and so now where we are in the market as we see that price in the uptrend this is where i want you to ask yourself are you the buyer or are you the seller? And if you're either one of those, show evidence of that, okay? So here's what I mean. Right now, let's take apart where we are now. I think a lot of times when people trade, they try to go to the left. Well, let me see what price is doing to the left, but they neglect where price is now. Like we're here now. Why are we going to the left? We're here now. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, at this time, price made a high here at 143.75s, okay? And it's the highest that price has been. This was actually last week in June, okay? Yeah, last week. Okay, the last week of June. And so now uh, price is down here. Um, now where I'm talking, trading around 139.6, okay? But something significant has happened. And the thing that is significant that we really need to pay attention to is the fact that price just made on the daily time frame a new lower low. Let me explain why. Previously, back in June, price made a high here at 141.892s, and then it toppled down and made a low at 139.855, and then it toppled back up and made a high at 143.75. What does this mean? Price was continuing to go in the uptrend. It was in a natural up cycle right? Trend continuation cycle. So now what price has done is reversed. Price has pushed past the last higher low in an uptrend. In, in yesterday's live stream, I talked about this, where I said in, the, in an uptrend, the most important part of the uptrend is the higher low. Because if price passes it, if price pushes past it, that means that sellers have come into the market. And instead of looking for buys, you may want to possibly look for sales or maybe even sit on your hands because now we're about to change cycles. Instead of going in trend continuation, we're reversing, which means price could be retracing or, or just depending on trend going into trend continuation again. So now this is the evidence that price has reversed. And what this tells you to do is to stop being the buyer because now we have more sellers in the market. Now, when I see more sellers in the market, immediately what I do, and what I show my clients to do is you now need to put your structure or whatever it is that you're now about to plot to show where you want to enter your trade. But before you do that, it is important to understand that if this is a true reversal, where can price potentially go to next? And in a reversal, there's only two to three reasons why I do this, what I'm about to tell you guys. It's one of the only times I go up in time frames versus down. I'm going up in time frames because what this tells me is that there is one bigger candlestick that I need to really focus on, which is the weekly. Because I'm on the daily, 
if price reversed here, what does the weekly look like? And I know it's showing the same information, but I really need to see if the cycle has changed. Once again, where can price go next if we continue to fall? Where are we? And so when I go up to my weekly time frame, I'm going to erase my estimation zone here. If I go up to the weekly time frame, you guys will see that we are still in an uptrend. Just because you reverse on one time frame does not mean that everything has changed on all time frames at the same time. It's all about cycles, okay? So, price, and let me get this out for you guys so y'all can keep up with me once again. On the weekly time frame, there was a higher high here back in April at 136. And then there was a higher low at 127.5. And then we still have 143.751. So this is the candlestick you would need, this doji, or if you want to call it an inverted hammer, depend or uh yeah, uh inverted hammer, depending on how you see the candlestick. You you want to see a price will stay below 143.75 since price first has reversed. On a higher time frame, reversals don't happen often. They don't. And what I mean is after price has been trending for quite some time throughout the year unless something is different based on a weekly a monthly in the daily time frame you could get three to four reversals sometimes there's more sometimes they're less but other than that price is just really moving in one direction as it's fluctuating and a reversal could happen more on lower time frames but then that just means that the cycle changed so if this is a true cycle change meaning on the daily time frame price was continuing up but then you got that new low this could be called a retracement as price is continuing down. However, price is still in an up trend. Okay. And if you decide to be the seller, all you're doing is counter trending based on the weekly time frame. And price is just pushing down on the daily time frame and or the four hour time frame. But the uptrend on the higher time frame per the weekly is still valid. And so now if you sell you could say well price could come um towards 127.5 yen in this case and we would need to see if price can stay above it since price is in an uptrend and here's what i mean if you look at the past higher lows that were created and let's go ahead and put some tools on this chart as well so Back in last year, November 2021, there was a higher low at 122. The beginning of January 24th, um, 2022, there was another higher low at 123. And now we have another higher low at 127. You're wanting to see if price will pull back, but still prove it can stay above 127.5. And this is when you say, okay, I'm going to set my structure here. Um, somewhere above 127.5 because if this is the case and if price can stay above it you have two options technically three one you take no trades if you believe price will continue down because maybe you're not the counter trend trader maybe you're the person who does not trade retracements and this is a part of knowing and understanding who you are as the trader if this issue you take no positions two you could be the counter trend trader and you could sell, but understand that is more riskier than trend trading because there is no guarantee of any deeper pullbacks on the weekly time frame. And or three, one thing that you could do is say, um, I will set a pending order or whatever it is that you're going to do. Um, and you could say, I'll set my, wherever you put your structure, you say, I'll set my, my limit here. And then I'll only be triggered in once it gets there. So there are three things that you could do. Once again, the recap, stay on your hands, wait for price to go back down for you to enter manually. Two is sell and sell down to where you want to take the next potential buy. Number three, set a pending order, leave the trade alone, leave the pair alone. So those are three things that you could do, okay? But this is how you can spot reversals. You first need visual evidence of it. And you have to question if it is a true reversal. And this is how you also know it's going to be a true reversal. So here's something else you can do. This is what a lot of people end up doing as well, too. Uh, if price pulls back, because you don't just say, well, I just want to sell to be in a sale. Price could actually pull back. And it could stay below 143.751s. 
And if it pulls back and continues down, it makes a new low per the daily time frame. Okay, I, I have to stress that. Then that is the confirmation that price is pushing down. The sellers have control. Even though price is still in an uptrend, it's just retracing per the higher time frame or it's countering per the higher time frame. It's just giving you a deeper pullback, okay? So that's how you can look at it as well. And there's another example on Euro New Zealand dollar, how this same thing is panning out um, at the same time. It's like kind of the same moves, kind of, even though these are two different currency pairs. Um, but the same can be said when price is going in a downtrend. Once price passes that previous uh, lower high and creates that initial higher high, um, then you just need to just go up one time frame just to see what price is doing up there to see where it could go next. And then you just go from there. Okay. So when it comes to reversals, I don't really use the daily time frame for my structure or to say where price can go next. I just go up one time frame. And this has helped me and even more clients who I teach be able to spot things like that. And then we just start to trade with that trend. Okay. And so I hope that this quick video helps you, um, even with guiding you. Um, my job as a coach is not always to just give, take profits and stop losses. I think anyone can do that. I think for me, what it really boils down to is just helping you see the market a little bit different so you can make better decisions and find clarities and ways in which you can enhance your trading and give you a personal edge to make your own trading decisions because not every trading decision is going to be equal it's going to be the same um and you know we have to take accountability for the actions that we take and understand why we're doing what we're doing and when we're doing what we're doing okay so if you have any questions about this video or anything i just said please write them in the comment section below this video and i will see you guys in the next one you guys be blessed